For the last few years, Motorola has been dominating the value for money smartphone market. They seem to be able to offer devices with little compromise at great price points, and not only that, they offer devices that can be customised in a way no other manufacturer can compete with. This year, Motorola are back with its latest 5.7 inch flagship device, the Moto X Style, also known as the Moto X Pure Edition in the US, and it enhances on the Android experience Google intended its users to have. For £350, can the Moto X Style compete with other flagship devices out there? Let's find out. The Style is a large device, and maybe too large for anyone with smaller hands. If you choose to buy this through an online retailer instead of using Motorola's Moto Maker, you will only have two options, which are black or white. The front of the device is dominated by the large 5.7 inch display, front facing camera and all the sensors, and we also have a front facing flash on this device. Above and below the screen you will find the chrome front facing speakers and microphones, and unlike the Moto X Play, we have the stereo speakers here which is perfect for anyone who enjoys media consumption or music playback. The body of the device is comprised of aluminium and feels very premium for a device at this price point. On the top of the device you will find the 3.5mm headphone jack as well as a SIM micro SD card tray which requires the use of an included ejector tool to remove. On the right hand side you will find the textured power button and volume rocker, and on the base you will find the micro USB port for charging the device. Moving on to the rear of the device, you will find a metal strip with Motorola's trademark dimple, and in this strip is where the camera and dual tone flash are housed. The back of the Moto X style features a very grippy textured rubber, making it a very comfortable device to hold, especially when it weighs in at 179 grams. It's certainly not the lightest device on the market, but its curved body makes for a very pleasurable user experience. Overall, I am a huge fan of the design, and it is certainly premium, and I much prefer this to the glass balls we have seen from other manufacturers. When it comes to the display, Motorola has made no compromises. What we have is a 5.7 inch display with Quad HD resolution, with 520 ppi. Unlike some other flagships though, we have a TFT LCD panel with IPS technology, as opposed to the AMOLED displays that we have seen elsewhere on previous models. Motorola is opting to use a TFT LCD panel, and this has allowed them to deliver a great looking screen with more balance and certainly less intense colour reproduction than we find on AMOLED panels. This gives a more true to life representation when we are watching things like videos or looking at pictures on our device, and I think Motorola has certainly made the correct choice with this option. The viewing angles are excellent, and really the only complaint that I have is that last year's Moto X got a little brighter, making it easier to view outdoors. Being a Motorola device usually means timely updates, and the Moto X style arrived running the latest Android 5.1.1 update. As mentioned earlier, in my opinion, Motorola deliver one of the finest Android experiences out there. Motorola give Android fans what they crave, and that is of course stock Android, but they have slipped in a few tweaks that honestly just enhance on what Google has done, and make the overall experience more enjoyable. With the latest top end processor and 3GB of RAM, you need not worry about the experience here, as everything is buttery smooth, from animations and multitasking, to even hardcore gaming. I put this under very strenuous testing and it never let up once. Of the 32GB of onboard storage, the user has access to 24GB, which is not terrible at all considering we can expand via the micro SD card slot up to an extra 128GB. This should be more than enough for any user, so I have no issues in this department. So we are basically running stock Android with a few tweaks, and I guess it makes sense to focus on these, so first up we have Moto Display. Moto Display is a feature on the Moto X that I feel I could not live without. It lets you easily preview incoming notifications on your lock screen without the need to unlock your device. To take a peek, all you have to do is wave your hand over the top of the screen, or give the phone a gentle rock, and if you have any notifications, simply press on them and you will get a preview. It is a tweak that makes life a whole lot easier, and you can even set up what apps you would like and not like featured, so this gives you plenty of privacy. Next up we have Moto Actions. If you're looking for a way to quickly access apps like your camera, then you will love Moto Actions. When set up, you can do things like twist your wrist to quickly launch the camera app, 
or do a chopping motion to enable or disable the flashlight. Overall, Moto Actions is a simply awesome and I find it very useful. So now let's talk about the camera. The Moto X style camera arrives with some serious improvements and if you ask any previous Moto X owners, this is definitely where Motorola usually failed to deliver. Thankfully this year things have changed for the better and we now have a camera that is able to deliver some stunning shots both indoors and out. What we have is a 21 megapixel rear camera joined by a two tone LED flash. The camera software is pretty basic and there are no manual controls to be found which may disappoint some serious photographers out there. While autofocus is great, I still also prefer to use the manual focus option which is a nice toggle that allows you to set the brightness level. The image processing seems to be well balanced and the images produced seem to be of a high quality with some true to life colours and great detail. Auto HDR mode certainly helps to give more detail to darker areas in photos so I would suggest that you use this as default. The built in optical image stabilisation is also a huge improvement and really helps ensure that you can catch some great photographs. Low light performance however is where smartphone cameras tend to fall apart and the Moto X style is no different. When it comes to video, you will be happy to know that the Moto X style now shoots in 4K, so you will be able to capture some wonderful footage. Overall, the Moto X style's camera is a massive improvement on previous generations and you can certainly do a lot worse. When it comes to battery life, the Moto X style arrives with a 3000mAh battery, which in normal circumstances is pretty sizeable. At launch, Motorola claimed that the style had all day battery life but unfortunately with high specs and a quad HD screen, the battery life does suffer a little. So if you are someone like me who likes to go out after work or has a longer working day, then I maybe suggest carrying your charger with you. The main culprit for the battery drain is of course that huge quad HD screen and with the phone being larger than some of its competitors, I don't see why Motorola couldn't have fit a larger battery in to compensate. Either way, the addition of Motorola's turbo charger makes a huge difference as just 15 minutes of charging can give you up to an extra 10 hours of usage, so I would definitely carry this if possible. Overall, I think the Moto X style is one of the best bang for your buck devices on the market at present time and you could certainly do a lot worse than owning one of these. The design and near stock Android experience make this a very pleasurable device to use on a daily basis and the improved camera from previous generations is the icing on the cake. Pair that with the fact that Motorola are great at delivering the updates and you should definitely have a device that could satisfy you at least for the next few years.